my dad got a new guitar. What's a Gibson Murphy Lab? Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin, and today we are going to be doing something so exciting. We are unboxing a brand new guitar here at the studio. Now, those of you who know me know I am a huge fan of my private makers for guitars. I've never been a big just name brand guy. I love Cower Guitars and Syfe and Fidelity and a lot of brands that... Uh, a lot of other players may not be familiar with, especially in the mainstream, but they are some of the best guitars out there on the market. Well, a few months ago, I was up visiting my friend Tyler Shirelli up in uh, the Liberty Palin Music Store, and they had gotten in a bunch of these Gibson Murphy Lab guitars. And I'm truthful here, I've always questioned whether they were worth it. I just never, never really floated my boat. Um, and then he pulled out some guitars, and he pulled out a 59 Les Paul that was ultra heavy aged. And I laughed at it first, like, oh, that's kind of cool looking, blah, 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 blah. And like, yeah, you know, the guys from Scythe do a great job of aging, and, and theirs looks a lot like this. It's really cool. Um, and then I played it. And that was a mistake. I shouldn't have played it because I started to fall for this guitar. There was something about the pickups that just were amazing, the feel of the neck, everything. And then a couple weeks later, the Big Slick comedy show was here in town. And Tyler knew I was going to be there, and he brought it with him to show some of the band members that were going to be there playing. And uh, he played on stage with uh, Daughtry and uh, Darius Rucker, and they did Hold My Hand Together. And the solo in that, when he was playing it, just I fell in love with that guitar, listening to him play, just the way that that guitar sounded like. And um, it's actually, actually, they did a cover of U2's One. I can't remember if it was him and Daughtry or who, but it was phenomenal. And that was actually where it, it really just, I, I loved it, absolutely loved it. So, um, Needless to say, I go back up there to visit. We're talking. I'm just like, I, I can't pay that amount of money. And um, There was a couple guitars I had that Tyler wanted, and we kind of talked about it back and forth a little bit, and I finally decided it was two guitars that weren't getting played, and I've always said I don't have guitars here that aren't getting played. I need to get them in somebody's hands to play if I'm not playing them. And so I let go of my Cower Supernaut, which is one of my favorite, just amazing. We'll, we'll have a whole story on that someday. Um... And then I, I let go of a Syfe Jazzmaster, and uh, both probably going to be available at Palin pretty soon, but uh, great guitars. But this one just, it was that right place, right time. This one just sang to me, and I decided, okay, we probably should have at least one real Gibson here in the studio. So, let's get into this and unbox this bad boy and see what it looks like. I'll turn on the other camera so you guys can see this as I go to. Um, we're going to crack this open. I gotta say, Gibson shipping, like, just these, the way they package everything with the extra reinforcements in there, they do a really good job. I'm gonna have to save this box just in case I ever need it again. Okay. Wow. Okay, so first things first, I'll hold this up in the main camera and then down here. You can see the leather on the case looks like it has been broken in and aged scuffed up a little bit doesn't even look like a brand new case it looks like it's actually had some life to it which again not everybody's cup of tea i know a lot of people don't like to have you know the aged look to them um but wow but then oh the part that just i'm so excited for okay this is probably the most insane guitar I've ever seen. Um, let's, I'm gonna hold this up. We're gonna take some close-ups of this, but just to give you a little initial look at what this looks like. I'm gonna kind of get it around in the light so you can see it. Just the grain was nuts. The feel of this neck, I can't tell you enough. I've never thought a broken in neck like this would really feel as amazing as it does but it is one of the most comfortable feels in your hand. Just feels like your hand is molded to this, this shell. It's, it's insane. And the checking, I'll take some close up looks so you guys can see this, but um, I know from this angle and the brightness, you don't really notice it, but 
when I get it in the right light, and I'll do that when I do it, you can kind of see some of that checking pattern coming through. It's absolutely absurd. They've done an excellent job, way better than the old razor where they took the razors and they checked them and made them sound all funky. But hey, the proof's gonna be in the pudding here. Let's plug this in and actually play it and see what it sounds like. I think it's gonna be killer. All right, now let's listen to some sound samples of this so you can hear what it sounds like. We're gonna start off in the neck pickup because this is the part that absolutely blew me away from the, from the very beginning. So I want you to just hear what it sounds like. We've got the volume and tone turned all the way up. Super sweet, just gorgeous sounds to it. But if I roll the tone back, usually what happens when you get to about seven is you get a real muddy tone, but I want you to hear a seven on this. Still really clear on the treble side. Let's roll it all the way down to a three. See, still nice and clear and articulate. A little more muddy, but not bad. And even all the way down to like a two and a one. Now we're starting to get some of that mud. So if I roll up to like a five. Still sounds great. And then all the way open. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I like rolling it down to like a seven. I think that's where I'm gonna live at. Like it's just. Now the volume knob's a little bit more reactive, so you can hear once I get down to about halfway through, it's definitely a lower volume, but this can be really handy when you're using fuzzes and drives to bring the volume up. Um, and then we'll put it in the mid position because the mid position is also really impressive. I'll just roll everything back up to 10. So a little bit snappier. And the sustain is just stupid. It goes for days. It's still going. It's still going. I mean, just impressive. And then on the neck, now the neck can get really spanky. I said neck, bridge, sorry. See, super chimey, almost Telecaster-like. And if we add a little drive to that. And if I turn it down just a little. If you've got it cranked at the full 10. Just. All right, let's add in a little delay and a little bit of uh, fuzz here. that up to the uh, neck pickup here. You hear a little muddier, a little brighter here. Just absolutely insane. And again, I mean, I know the video is capturing some of the beauty of this, but to understand how amazing this grip feels and how this neck just smoothly slides up and down, I'm absolutely blown away with the craftsmanship here.
All right, so now we're going to get in close with the guitar so you can kind of see some of the hardware features. This is absolutely insane. I mean, you can see the checking on here when I get really close. You see how fine line it is, and it's not just straight razor cuts. This is a really beautiful aging process that they've done on here. Pick mark, wear down. The hardware is still a little new looking. You'll see when we get in the case in a second. I do like that they put some aged covers on there, and then you can even see it along the edges here. You got a nice checking fretboard is fantastic get down to some of the knobs there's been some criticism online of the knobs i actually like them i think they look fantastic um and then you can just see that checking out pan up here so you can see the neckline i mean it is just absolutely stunning and then when we get to the headstock you can really see the work that they put into this i love the age tuners here i know it's kind of hard to capture in the light but just absolutely gorgeous the way that they wear down the less Paul you know just so it looks like it's older and then the part that just sold me genuinely is when I turn it over you're gonna see on the back of the headstock here we've got the age tuners just gorgeous but then watch this neck as you come down you see the aging here and then here it comes into almost a burn finish but this is smooth to the touch right here you can see the raw wood in there and then when you get down here and there's still some of this finish on here your hand just grips it. it. It just allows you to really dig in and feel that feel, especially when you're soloing. It is just so comfortable. Everything about this is absolutely perfect and comfortable and ergonomic. Uh, what Tom Murphy's done here is just absolutely amazing. All right, now let's take a look at the case. You can see, as we talked about earlier, how it's got like damage on it. It's designed to look like an old beat up case. The locks are all rusty. See, we've got the old Gibson Starter tag there. But what's really cool when you get in here, this is Aria's favorite part. This is this uber plush velvet material. See, we've got the little pillow in here to support the headstock because we all know about Gibson headstocks. And then on the inside here, this is really cool. You've got little story about what kind of strings they use, some picks, all that kind of good stuff in there. You got your inspected by card, keys to your case, then a little uh, Gibson Experience tag there, um, and then instructions for your Tunematic Bridge, which I thought was really cool. Put all that in there. A little Gibson Murphy Lab guide that has that age kind of stripey look to it with your serial number and everything. Very cool. But then my favorite two pieces are these right here. You get a plastic back cover so if you remember when we did the little walkthrough of it, it had a metal cover up on there. So if you want to take that off to save it and preserve it and to make yours really look like an old authentic, you can have that. And then they also did a switch tip cover because the switch tip that comes on it looks pretty normal and not, you know, like not aged at all. This has that aged cover and looks like an old tip from back in the 50s. So very, very cool. The attention to detail that Tom Murphy and his crew put into these, it is just absolutely astounding oh my gosh so what's the final verdict <sighs> am i gonna miss my argonaut and my sifes absolutely lord those were two amazing guitars but i wasn't playing them and i want them to go to a good home so i hope they find a new place this is one of those guitars that i think is going to be inspirational it's one of those that i am going to get out from time to time and be able to really play and i really wanted to have a real gibson les paul when people come over here i've got a ton of les paul versions of callings and rock and roll relics but but i do think there's going to be some players out there that come over to the studio and really want to play on a gibson so i'm glad we have something here now for them to play on as well um, but truly an inspirational guitar so to tom murphy at murphy labs um you have made this Gibson detractor into a believer again. And I didn't think that was possible. I genuinely never thought I was going to buy a Gibson guitar. Um, but this, this really blew me away. Your aging techniques and the meticulous hours you must have spent studying how to make this finish do this, how to get that neck dialed in like that and that ultra heavy aging. Mwah, uh, fantastic work. I am so blown away. For anyone who hasn't given the Ultra Heavy Age a chance, please go out there. If you can find a shop, I know Palin's got a couple more. Find a shop near you, try them out. You will be blown away. And I got to say, just be prepared. You may be trading in some stuff to make one of these happen, uh, but it's well worth it. I am so absolutely thrilled with their workmanship. Uh, my hat's off to you, Mr. Murphy. You, you nailed it.
Well, thank you all for coming out today. I hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek of the new guitar. Um, it was a lot of fun breaking it out and just trying it for the first time. Um, next week, we'll be taking a look at a pedal demo. We're going to get a little deep dive, not as crazy as I went last week, but we're going to have some fun uh, with a pedal dive and just see what you think. So join us then. Take care. Have a wonderful week this week, and we'll see you soon.